Hello and welcome back to Grumble Plays, a new Let's Play series, episodes coming out every other Sunday on early access for patrons and supporters. And now, if you've just wandered in off Twitter or YouTube or anywhere else, live for everyone. On Grumble Plays, I play pretty much whatever the hell I like, doing the voices, having a chat, dreaming about video games while playing other video games. I'm having a great time. I hope you will too. Let's get into it. Night two, Frontera District. The memory of what had happened last night was a shadow over everything around me. The desperate text, savvy smashed phone. I tried to quiet my mind and just feel into my body for a second. Ugh, this wasn't working. Where the hell was she? This wouldn't be the first time she'd ghosted, but this felt different. And I knew basically nothing about what her life in Los Ojos was like. Savvy was headed to a nightclub, but its name? Total mystery. Oh, and she was in some kind of trouble at work. Whatever that was. I tried to recall as many details as I could about last night, scribbling in my journal app until my hand ached. Maybe I'd seen that symbol on her phone before, after all. It wasn't a name, but it was a person to track down, and a neighborhood. As long as I met my Neocap quota, I could stay on the search without losing my job and leaving LO as a total disaster. Oh, Luke, that was his name, of course. Luke, who totally did not puke in the back of our car. Of course not. Oh, hold on, let's head into the journal first. Yeah, Savvy, where are you? We dropped her off at 9 p.m. at, at Rich Person Dorm. That's right. Her so-called soulmate, Jace, never actually texted us the details of where to go. She seemed upset. She said she kind of fucked up at work, but how and where? And we found the phone smashed with a weird sticker, which... Ta-da! Matched Azul's tattoo. Azul was, um... The person who... Uh, got into an accident with uh, a Capra car um, and just, you know, they just got into the back of our cab and, you know, you know, said, basically just said drive. Uh, and we had a little bit of an argument before we actually got going, but we did help them in the end. Um, also didn't take any money off them for the fare because ambulances are supposed to be free. So, and to be fair, they should have gotten an ambulance, probably, because if I recall correctly, they were bleeding. Um, so yeah, they said that they called a Radix swarm um, to help them out, but it turned out that the Radix swarm wasn't really interested in helping them after the accident, but more uh, interested in smashing up the Capra car, which, while fair, wasn't what Azul expected. But yeah, so that was the sticker, or that was uh, their tattoo. And that was the sticker on Savvy's phone. So question is, what's that sticker there before? Did someone take her and put it on? You know, like, because she seems to be working with... I don't know. I mean, she's she's definitely working with environmentalists, as I, as I understand it, which is why she was anxious about even getting seen, uh, getting into a car. Um, or, you know, driving around with us. So it would make sense that she'd also be involved with Radix somehow. Oh yeah, and we, we don't like Jace. Because uh, I am detecting some unresolved queer feelings. Definitely from Lena, Lena to Savvy in that direction. It's entirely possible that Savvy is entirely oblivious. 
of all that. So yeah, that's the last text that we had from Savvy. 2 a.m. Lena, fast as you can, with a pin to her location. But no address attached to it. Our field grid is, well, we're running pretty hot, just not the fun way. You're in between red and yellow. You may be feeling arousal, excitement, or anxiety. Well, let me tell you, pal, it's definitely not the first two. Between red and yellow, you are beginning to feel agitation that could be either positive and negative. Your heart rate is quickening and symptoms such as faster thoughts and more impulsive reactions may occur. Steer towards an appropriate quadrant by visualizing how you would like to direct your energy. Okay. As always, this thing is not FDA approved. Just saying. Okay, so that's the money we have, so we probably have enough for gas, but we do need to make 35 uh, coin today. Or, you know, Kappa cash. Because we are, we're not part of Kappa, but we're still running on company script. Isn't that lovely? Oh, of course, and we, um, I forgot to mention her in my intro, but we also drove around Ellie Bream, who was, uh, practically a walking research station just you know with cameras and mics and recording everything she did uh, everything she did everything she does every everyone she talks to um but she was lovely i hope we'll meet her again luke however i hope we'll never meet again but i have seen screenshots and i'm pretty sure that we will so let's look at our map we are here we're in frontera district Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, so that's too far away, you know, to, to drive through Liberty Heights to get to Carlos. Let's see, can't zoom out any further, and there are no other rights for us right now, so. Una St. Clair, all things to all people. So that's where Una is, and that's where Una wants to go, which is pretty close to a petrol station, or a fuel station, rather, which is good. We could, of course, also go there first and fuel up and then pick her up. But... Now nah, we can we can make the journey. Let's go. Let's go pick them up, and then we shall see. Also, the um, having not many rides available is because of our low rating. I need to get to the cadence, and I need to get there fast. What's that? A hotel? It's the casino, the big one. I remember when cab drivers were expected to memorize things like this. I'm new here. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just pressed for time. Head to Frontera, north side. That was a straight shot. Easy trip. Oh, no, don't go that way. Rajaniemi Square is a mess. You can barely get through. Uh, great. A backseat driver. I can go around. Would you like me to take Jean Street or Flamber? Choose one at random. And I do mean random. As random as you can make it. Weird. This was a whole different kind of backseat driving. Psychological. Fun. I whispered, eeny, meeny, miny. 
and swerved at the last moment onto Jean Street. Not Flamborough? You said to choose? Wait. Ah, yes. That's just what I needed. So I chose correctly? No, I was desperate for a bit of chance. A dose of entropy. Randomness, you know? Resets my mind. Sometimes one finds oneself in a rut of predictability. Tell me about it. It's why humor is such a bomb. Comedy is based on the unexpected twist. Interesting method. How about I pick a number? Between one and hippopotamus? Between your hippocampus and mind, thank you. But no. Not that kind of randomness. I need chance with real stakes. Which is why I'm zooming down Jean towards a casino? Yes, but now I'm not sure it will work. The stakes here are high in monetary terms, but they don't actually matter, don't you find? They matter when you roll a hot 13. You've never been inside a casino, have you? I like to think life itself is a gamble. And the whole world is my house? So that's a no. No, the casino definitely isn't going to work. I need to find some entropy that matters. Why? What's this all about? Well, it's simple. Almost obvious. Something is wrong with the world. And going down Jean Street instead of Flamborough can make it right? No, but it can help me troubleshoot it. Chance has a feeling. Like a thousand tiny lightning bolts on a cellular level. Like you're tumbling through space. Surely you know what I mean. Uncertainty? Of course. So then you know it's the most exquisite sensation you'll ever feel. When it's not terrifying. The unknown? Right now that was savvy and that was most definitely mostly terrifying. Okay, but what's the world's problem exactly? Sadly, I fear our timeline has become tangled. The universe is made of infinite timelines, always branching, based on the tiniest decisions, is perfectly coherent and stable. As long as the branches remain distinct. I waited for her to say more. So you see the obvious danger. Obvious is not quite the world I would have chosen. So if our timeline is tangled up with another one... How do we untangle it? Oh, I think that's well beyond our capabilities. But it's good to know how of kilter one's reality is. It helps you decide how annoyed to be with friends who constantly reschedule lunch. Connor, for example. Has anyone cancelled on you lately? Now that, Una, is a good joke. I thought as much. Tell me what happened. It should help me re it, it should help me calibrate. I mean, will it let us? I told her what had happened with Savvy. I was supposed to move in with my best friend and she didn't show. And now I don't know if she's in trouble. Or hurt. Or maybe just the worst. She listened like my story was feeding her. Maybe I'd get five stars out of it, but it was a little creepy. So your friend just vanished? With no explanation? 
None. And you don't know how to feel about it. It confuses you. Wouldn't you be confused? Perfect. Perfect. I don't know if you caught the part where I said she might be hurt. She ignored me. Now, this next part is crucial. If your friend hadn't disappeared, where would she be right now? I don't know. I just moved here. Please, just guess. Think in terms of chance and what if and maybe. Let them wash over you. I could tell she was never going to drop it. I might as well indulge her. Okay, if she hadn't just blinked off the map, Savvy would probably be... here in my car. Right next to me in the passenger seat, just cruising. Savvy blowing, perfect vape rings out the window. Calling out compliments to everyone, whether they liked it or not. Savvy! We'd be blasting some cheesy mix from high school. It would have been awesome. Yep. That's exactly where Savvy should be. She'd be right here, with me. She looked around the cab as if she'd just noticed it. She would, would she? I remembered Radix and what Sevi had said about being anti-car. Definitely. Well, drive me around then. Let me feel her absence. I passed the turn that would have taken us to the casino. Una sat like a statue, looking straight ahead. It wasn't the look most packs get when they're reading their screens. But then she was reading Space Time? My mind wandered, and I thought about all the maybe savvies in other timelines. She could be doing so many things. It was part of why I wanted to move in with her again. Maybe dancing to a DJ set at some underground club. She'd get past the bouncer with a wave of her hand. Instead of ditching me to go with someone else. You can pull over here, dear. Thank you. That was good. Very useful. I wish I could pay you back in kind and help you locate your friend. Information is obscenely undervalued against coin, don't you agree? Any clue would help. I've got nothing to go on. Well, I can't tell you where she is, I'm afraid. But I can tell you where she was supposed to be. You know your friend even better than she knows herself. At this moment, in a stable timeline, she's at a terrible Berlin techno-themed club called Stanzmaschine. Am I saying that right? It's not that far from here in any case. You're unbelievable, Una. I, I think I can use this. Think nothing of it. It's merely a byproduct of my work. So, I have to ask, are you... A physicist? No, though you're not the first person to think that. Just a quantum statistician. Think of me as an accountant, except the spreadsheet is very, very large. And you can be simultaneously rich and broke. I don't think I could handle that kind of uncertainty in my camper cash account. Oh, don't worry about that. Counter espionage is quite lucrative. In any case... Wait, back up. Counter espionage? Ah, yes! With a little time, a little luck, and just the right entropy differential, no secret is safe. The only way to protect your communications from a quantum statistician is to hire a better one. And I'm the best there is. So. So can you, like, read my texts? You'll see. I really mustache. Thank you for the ride and the story. 
This timeline is indeed as unstable as I feared. And we might even be able to fix it. Wait, we might fix it? She slid out and walked up the sideway, sidewalk away from my car, zigging and zagging as she went. It looked random, and the sinking feeling in my stomach? That felt very, very certain. If there really were infinite timelines... Where did they branch? I reached for my phone to find my next packs. Time to choose again. Una Sinclair gave you five stars. Thank you for the honesty and the humor. A wonderfully chaotic source of entropy. Thank you, Una. I think I love you. And I think you're very odd. But hey, that just pulled up our rating to a 4.0, which means we're no longer directly in danger of uh, deactivation. And we got some coin. Oh, and we are now in... Is it Les Rouges? Is, is it Luz Rouge? I am not sure. Oh, oh, that's bad. Oh, balls. Ugh. Oh, God. I'd seen LOPD officers on the news before. The cold black screens where their faces should be. I tried to keep from looking back, from moving around too much. From looking as suspicious as I felt. Seeing one in person rattled my nerves even more. Where was I supposed to look? I need to see your license and registration. Here you go. I swiped accept on my phone. My ID flashed onto a screen. I was in the system. It says here Cactus Flats. Yes, I'm new in town. Mm-hmm. What's your address, ma'am? I don't have one yet. You don't have one yet. I just moved here. I'm, I'm trying to get in touch with my friend. We're supposed to be roommates. So I'll know soon. I just don't right now. Great job, Lena. Not suspicious at all. Do you know why you've been pulled over? I don't. I don't think I was speeding. You made an illegal pickup in a designated Capra zone. For my last pickup? That was on the other side of town. How could he have seen me? I was only there for 10 seconds. It had to be that Capra car that passed by. I didn't realize. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't know. Sorry. Mm-hmm. That's 45 coin for the AV zone violation. I see your Capricash wallet has the funds. Great, I can just withdraw the coins directly. What's a fine and they hit my Capricash account? How could they do that? No talking back. Okay, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. You're new in town. Yes, Barry. So you're probably not aware of friends of the LOPD. I am not. Well, we throw a yearly policeman's ball. It's a great time. 
really helps the community. It's an initiative supported by the Friends of the LOPD. A charitable organization made up of citizens. Like you. I see. Would you be interested in making a donation? If this was how things operated in Los Oros, did I have to play ball? Folks normally donate about 20 coin. I can't. I'm I'm low on cash. Understood. Your fine will be automatically deducted from your wallet. And the violation will appear on your record unless you contest it in court. Any questions? I couldn't put myself in Capra's pocket. No. You know you really stick out on the road. Neocab. Most people use Capra. I felt his words in the pit of my stomach. Drive safe, Miss Romero. I waited until my breathing slowed before I started the car again. My fuel grid was deep in the deep red, no surprise. All I wanted to do was end a bad day with a good sleep, but thanks to Savvy's disappearing act, that wasn't an option. Either way though, I had to make up for that ticket. I needed the money, so I needed a PAX. Fuck. That was horrible. That was... That was... Honestly... Terrifying. Yeah, there he is. I am the law. You're corrupt as what you are. Well, honestly, I'd rather eat the cost of the ticket than to, uh, than to make a donation to the friends of the L.O.P. fucking D. Okay, this, this is wonderful, though, because, uh, in case you didn't know, I am German, um, so Stanzmaschine. Um, is it's basically it's a it's a stencil machine. That's what it is. So seeing that makes me very happy. Okay, let's see. My rating is up, so I have more choice of customers. Hopefully soon. Fiona Pack. My idea of a good picture is one that's in focus and of a famous person. Okay, Fiona. Who do we have here? Sam Lucas. Just setting up my neocab. Okay. So he's okay. I will... Tell you what, I'll get some gas just before I get hit with another fine. Let's go, let's go and see Steve. How about it? Let's go and see Steve. Carbon neutral since 2026. I wonder what that asterisk is for. Probably turns out that they're not so carbon neutral after all. Yikes, a little low when I didn't know when I'd be able to charge up again. Each bar would set me back two coin. A little steep, but here I was. Let's go two bars. That's fine. I considered my next move. We are in the Steve district. So let's go and pick up Fiona.
I pulled up to a gleaming apartment tower that was halfway between a condo and a narcology. What's a narcology? I bet the place was full of Capra swag and expensive produce. Wardrobe crisis! Please wait a minute! Thanks! Hope she wouldn't take too long. I should have been with Savvy by now, drinking to my new life in Los Ojos. Maybe with a nice sour cider. Now I didn't even know if she was dead or alive. Where was she? What was she thinking right now? I'm sorry, thank you so much for waiting. Was this the standard look in Allo? It must have taken her hours. So this is a Neocab car, huh? First time not riding Capra? Yeah, I needed to ask you a weird question. I mean, it's like medium weird, if that's okay. I could only manage a shrug. Okay, I know what that means. What did I say? Nothing and also everything. God, what was I thinking? I'm a mess. Damn, I should have sensed that she was vulnerable. I was distracted. I wasn't even supposed to be driving anymore tonight. I'm sorry, it's been a weird night. No, I'm sorry, I'm being crazy. I just cannot cry in this makeup, you know? Do you want to tell me what's wrong? I'm meeting my boyfriend for the first time. I know it sounds weird, but we're already together. We just haven't met in person. Side note, that's not weird. I've done that too. We started vid-chatting one day just for fun on one of those sites, you know? Been there. Three months later, we talk every day and it feels like we just fit. Like when something happens, he's the first person I want to tell. I actually look forward to staying in on Friday night now. So he flew here to see me in person, which means time for his first impression of me. Sounds like he's really into you. I guess, for now. It's just a little complicated. When we started vid chatting, I had my filter on because why not? I use it for everything, anyway. But then, I just never turned it off. So he's never really seen me, you know? I spent hours programming my Animesh to match the filter. I barely got any work done, but it looks good, right? It's beautiful. Thanks. I spent a lot of time on it. Tested a bunch of versions. I feel like I could write a book on how to design your ideal jawline. What program are you using on your Animesh? It looks super custom. What's an Animesh? Shut up! Uh. You're not wearing nano foundation? Um, programmable particles that can take on any pigment? Developed by marine biologists who studied cuttlefish? Basically adaptive camouflage for humans? Insert, there are many advantages to being a marine biologist here, folks. Wait, don't cuttlefish do that to avoid getting eaten? Or to avoid being seen by what they want to eat? Yeah, I get it, the symbolism is totally messed up. Well, I'd say yours is more like a cuttlefish, am I right? Ha! That was terrible. Amazing. I've just been on enough dates to know that look people get when you go in person and they're disappointed, you know? Their face kind of falls and their eyes go a little flat. 
That sounds awful. I just don't want that with Dre. I really like him. Like, maybe it's for real this time. This is where you tell me to, like, just be myself, right? No, I hate how people say like that, say that say that like it's some brilliant solution. Who doesn't want to be someone else every now and then, you know? Exactly. So, why meet up now? Uh, well, he's actually moving here. Lucky break with his job. Can you turn on the cab light? Sure thing. She rummaged in her purse and pulled out a packet of wet wipes. I never meant to have a screen boyfriend, you know? She tucked her precision curls behind her ears. Wait, are you good? I'm in the on-call sysadmin for three different companies and they ping me 24-7. I just started looking at profiles for fun. Sure enough, she started wiping the animesh from her face. No, you look lovely. Why? I hid a smile as I watched the digital Fiona melt away. A lot of the guys are creeps or bots. But Dre is always traveling for work. Otherwise, he'd have been snapped up a long time ago. He's a total 10. I'm like a natural 6, an enhanced 8. She rummaged deeper into her purse. I mean, she is way more than a 6, but also, yes, that whole rating thing is a trap. That whole rating thing is just a trap, don't you think? Like, who came up with the numbers? Some drunk frat boy 50 years ago? Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure. Oh god, she's. Yeah, she's. She means Zuckerberg, doesn't she? So fuck their judgment, right? Well, when you put it like that. Oh god. You're going to be okay. No, it's, it's not that. My glow shadow is in my other purse. Oh shit, shit, I didn't want to have to go into this barefaced. I just wanted a fresh start for a few swipes of color. I remember the little makeup bag I'd thrown in my purse before I set out for a low. That felt like sometime last year. You really look great without the makeup. Yeah, yeah, I just like it. It's fun, you know? I might have a glow shadow in my purse. I took an eye off the road to grab it and hand it back to her. Dangerous, Lena. Watch out! I got it. It's the cutest color, and a little goes a long way. You're gonna love it. Do you like it? Do you? It's technically still a kind of filter. I guess that's true. She chewed her lip and checked her reflection in the rear view again. You keep the glow shadow, okay? Oh my god, really? Thank you, thank you. I feel like this is a good omen, you know? People should fall in love with their eyes closed. Do you know who said that? Oscar Wilde is always a safe bet. Close! Andy Warhol. Nice. Oh, she winked. Oh, there's the bar. Good luck. And have fun. Fun. Is that what this is all for? 
Fiona flashed a devilish smile at me as she walked away, the first real one of the night. I saw she had a little gap in her front teeth. Ah, that's cute. My best friend has that and it's adorable. Cute. Fiona Pack gave you five stars. She's honest? A little too honest, maybe. She's so nice, like in a real way. I appreciate her trying to cheer me up. My queen saved my life tonight. Aw. Good luck to you, Fiona. My rating stayed the same. We got some money. Hey, 2525. And we're in Liberty Heights. It was well after midnight and I'd met my right quota. I checked my field grid, deep yellow. I had it in me to push on for one more ride tonight or I could call it early and get some rest. Come on, let's, let's do one more to, to make up a little bit of that ticket, huh? I decided to push on. Every PAX was a chance to learn the city and earn some coin. People should fall in love with their eyes closed. Andy Warhol and Fiona. Animesh. I mean, she did absolutely. I mean, she looked lovely with the Animesh on. Like, just, you know, with the effects in her hair. I, I wish she could have kept those. You know, like, because those, like, blossoms just look really cute. But, yeah. I'm glad that she, you know went in there with her natural jawline because she looked amazing with the makeup and without and the glow shadow was really cute i thought about like maybe you know maybe like pushing for no you look great without any makeup but i don't know i think it was a split second decision like i didn't i didn't super think about it but i think that may have like you know pushed her a little too far out of her comfort zone with us and like might have actually made her feel vulnerable again so even though we nearly had a little accident there i still decided to to give her my my glow shadow and i'm glad i did and yes people the rating system is is bollocks it is bollocks. And yeah, I mean, considering that this game is uh, set a little ways into the future. Drunk fret boy. Is our dear enemy, Mark Zuckerberg. Time to rewatch the social network, I guess. <gasps> There's Liam! Oh my gosh, this Liam, we can, we can, we can pick up Liam again. Stella. I'm not going to attempt their last name for fear of completely mangling it because uh, I never took Spanish. This above all, to thy known self be true. That's fair. Oh, there's Klaus again. I mean, like, Klaus is wearing a little suit and tie, but who wants to bet that on weekends we can find him in the Stanzmaschine? But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go and pick up Liam. Carlos Wong, I'll fix what else you. Hey, Carlos, can you, like, fix the totally corrupt police system in this town? Because that'd be cool. But no, we're, we're gonna... We're gonna go... Oh, I might... I might actually want to fuel up a little bit. Nah, I'm sure it'll be fine. Liam Baird! Liam waved to me before he got in the car. He looked excited to see me. 
I went back to see if I could get a laugh. Yeah, always, always shoot for one laugh of the day. It seemed to work. Yes. Hey, Elena. Wow, what are the odds we'd see each other again? Of all the Neocaps and all of Los Ojos, well, there's probably just me. He gets into mine. Fate. How have you been, Lena? Uh, do we, do we want to do a little bit of a lie? Pretty great. That's great. What have you been up to? Uh, getting used to the city, it's a lot. In a good way, mostly. Mostly? Right after we met, I met the sweetest corporate spy. Sounds dicey. Los Ojos is a lot of things, but never boring, apparently. So, what about you? I'm... wait, you've got one of those... One of those things on your arm, no way. The feel grid, wow. Yeah, actually, Savvy gave it to me. Huh, interesting. How do you feel about it? I am. Honestly, it's kind of weird. I know, right? I find it so bizarre, just as a concept, putting your emotions on display. Doesn't it make you uncomfortable? It does, sometimes. But I've been told that I have a lot of feelings. Like, a lot. And the feel good sort of draws them out of me. Yeah, it's... Yeah, I need to stop. Stop what? Being all thinky, dissecting stuff. If we pick that, are we flirting with Ilium? But, I mean, it's cool. We've got a good conversation going, so I like Thinky. It's the worst. I've been trying to stay out of the hairier side of Alo. But, Lena, not to bring the room down or the car, I guess, but can I ask you something? Of course. Do you know anything about Sophie Lemieux? The late Sophie Lemieux? Uh... I don't know. Do we know things? Not much. Oh, of course. She was a ballerina in LO who was killed by a car. Yes, of course. Like a car car. Human driver. You've probably heard of Sophie's Law, at least. Yes, of course, first episode. It was what, uh, what Ali, um, Ali Bream, the, you know, the corporate spy, was, um, was actually quizzing us about. Definitely. I figured. Affects you more than most. Well, after I left you the other night, I went out to take some pictures and stumbled into this massive crowd of people. It was a vigil for Sophie. Big deal. Lots of mourners. Some people had signs about cars, about Capra, or whatever. There was this portrait of her. Full ballet pose, arabesque, surrounded by flowers, people crying, chanting about change. That sounds... like a lot. It really was. Although what really struck me was the whole scene was bathed in this blue glow and it was coming off people's wrists, feel grids. Are they really that popular here? I mean, Una definitely had one today. I didn't see one on Luke. Ali had him. Savvy's got one. She's an open book, emotionally. 
and a mystery in every other way. Well, at the vigil, field grids were everywhere. I got some interesting shots, but it was so strange taking a photo with only one possible interpretation. It's just, here are some sad people. You know they are sad because they are blue. It's weird, you know? Yeah. Yeah, like... I mean, sure, maybe it is not that simple, but I mean... You know, what if you're in that crowd and for whatever reason your feel grid doesn't match everyone else's? I mean, when you're at a vigil, it's unlikely to, but... I don't think I like it. I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. Either way, it was really striking. Mostly blues. Some reds here and there, green and yellows too. What do those mean? Okay, this is interesting because here we could like regurgitate what it says in, uh, in our little user manual. But I don't want to sound like a Capra user manual, so... Okay, so we're feeling okay, so we're precluded from obfuscating. Fine. Calm, relaxed, positive, chill, happy. But see, see, that's the problem, right? If I show up at a funeral and my fuel grid says I'm stoked... Liam! You and I. <laughs> Maybe you're the murderer? I mean, I am tempted to go with that one. I am tempted. I mean, yeah, that, that is the sort of common sense thing, I guess. You're just enjoying happy memories. Probably, sure. But there's so much room for error, misinterpretation. I keep picturing the Mona Lisa. 500 years of that unreadable smile until you slap a fuel grid on it. I'm a bit scrambled up about the whole thing. So you're not in the market for one then. At least the look is interesting and I almost got a free one. Like a sponsorship? Are you an influencer? Ha! Working on it. Wait, are you really? I take a lot of pretty pictures. I'm told that's the first step. But anyhow, I'm at the vigil, yeah? Everything's blue, it's dreamlike, mournful. But then I look across the street and there's this whole gang, right? Not a feel good in the pack, it's a dark zone. I go over there to check them out and they say they're this group called Radix. The word hit me like a gut punch. Maybe I could get some intel if I played this right. Oh yeah? Who's Radix? They're anti-car activists. Cool people, mostly, except one of them who got pretty heated when I said they must like Sophie's Law. Rookie mistake. They hate cars, but they hate Capra even more. Even more than you, maybe. Hey, 
Hey, you're the one who brought them up this time. No baggage here. It's all good. So, what were they doing at the vigil? Well, they were actually trying to recruit. At Sophie Lumiere's vigil? That... I mean... Aside from the fact that I think Sophie's Law stinks and Capra stinks, that... It is kind of tacky. Yeah. They were saying the law is a cheap half measure. Gives Capra more power, doesn't save any lives. I mean, that's true. Anyway, I showed them the photos I took of the blue glow. And they said none of those people had field grids when they showed up. Apparently, two hours earlier, some Capra reps showed up and started handing them out free of charge. Oh my god. Oh wow, that's like... Ew. You know, those. it's not even that those people, like, had them. It's like Capra engineered that whole thing to, like probably take photos themselves and use them to be like oh hey someone died and you know a whole city is glowing blue you know to push like guilt people into supporting the law basically dang hold on is that really true Radix swore up and down. That's how it happened. Huh. Yeah. I guess my question is why? Because it puts on a show. Free advertising. And then I take pictures of it and share it with the world. Makes me feel... A little... Skeeved. Exactly. Yep. That tends to be Capra's thing. I know. I'm more than familiar. That's something I maybe should have told you the other day when I got weird. <laughs> when you got weird? Yeah. I got quiet and sort of standoffish. That wasn't fair. Oh, wow. No, that was on me. Well, at least let me make one little excuse. I worked for a big Capra adjacent company when I was still in the UK. I got the job really young, working in immersive tech and AI. Loved it. Oh wow, Liam, have I, have I been giving you the wrong accent this entire time? I'm sorry. It let me be creative and I felt like I was changing things. So we got big. We got big because we were good, but then you lose yourself, don't you? How do you mean? More and more, I was balancing creativity, my actual work, with corporate ethics. Gross. It was. We just kept working with the worst people, saying yes to more funding, regardless of where it came from. To make myself feel better, I joined all these initiatives for a change, for diversity, helping the right kinds of communities and people. I took so much on and so did lots of us, but it was just impossible. What's the phrase? Money talks? Definitely talked louder than we did. So you came to LO? The city of unavoidable politics? Ha! I know. It seems counterintuitive, doesn't it? I guess maybe this trip is a test to just see if I can turn my brain off. Be a tourist, not an activist. Just watch all the Capra stuff happen and let it float by. Just let everything float by. No agonizing over morals, no fighting, just observing. Where do you feel you're at? 
Doing my best to remain impartial on everything turns out to be a lot of work. I mean, just look at me. I'm lost right now. I took a really good picture of an important LO moment of people experiencing something profound. It might be one of my best. But I can't decide. I used to do nothing but decide. And now I can't even say if a photo I took is real. I knew the feeling. Was anything real in Los Ojos? Of course it's real. It's still real people experiencing something real. I have a feel grid. My feelings are still legitimate. Real people, real moment. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Hey, listen. Obviously, don't take your eye off the road, but... Do you think I could send you the picture? You can tell me what you think? I want to share it. I think it's important, but... I sort of love your thoughts. Be my moral compass? Yeah, send away. Thanks. And sorry if I'm being a downer. People come to LO for the lights and sights, you know? And then I'm getting right back into the muck. Yeah, Liam, you're not a downer. I'm in the same boat. I expected a lot more hanging out in nightclubs and a lot less... everything else. I pulled up to Liam's hotel again. It was hard not to feel a pang of jealousy. Having a decent place to sleep felt like it was part of another timeline for me. And here we are. Cool. Thanks for listening to me rant, Lena. And for looking at the photo for me. Anytime, friend. See you in texts. He was already scrolling through his camera as he walked in. That the fate of a de facto Capra ad campaign lay in my hands, mixed with the fate of a photo that could sway the Sophie's Law vote? I mean, yeah, shit. Liam, buddy, I can't tell if you came to the exact right person or the exact wrong one. Liam Baird gave you five stars. Two for two on positive interactions with Lena. Liam Baird, I love you. You are wonderful. Single-handedly bringing up my rating, that boy. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, that hurts. That, that hurts. We were at double that money. More than. It hoits. Okay, where the heckins are we? Oh, we are so far away from a bed. But, again, I, I do not want to put Lena into a Capra cop show. I'd rather stock up on some more fuel in the morning. Because she said she hates it. I scanned the place for pine cones as soon as I walked in. None that I could see. That plus the fact that I could practically taste the relief of a cool mattress had me asleep in record time. Oh right, we had that nightmare with pine cones. The first night. I dreamed of cactus flats again. I was back in my old room with all my little things. More pine cones and shells and now a few crystals, some mismatched earrings, a pearl-handled hairbrush. Say that ten times fast. I touched each object one by one, and as I did, each of them hummed. 
The sounds build on top of one another into a beautiful song. The song wrapped me up so I felt safe. Then it buzzed inside me with so much energy, I felt like I could fly. Then someone else was in the room, and I knew that they shouldn't have been there. I wasn't flying. I couldn't fly. And all my little things went away one by one in poofs of dust as their songs became screams. I started to vanish too. My body just blinked away piece by piece. I was nowhere and nothing. I woke up. I only made it to the lobby in time to scrounge the last lone muffin on the table. When I took a bite, it didn't scream. I couldn't tell if I was comforted or disappointed. Back to work. I had the name of Erratix bar now. Stanzmaschine. I could try the odds that that was the spot Savvy and I were supposed to meet up the night she vanished. I opened the Neocab app like it was going to give me some answers. Nope. At least now I knew a few friendly faces in the city. Hopefully one of them needed a ride as badly as I needed some leads. Okay, um, I think I'm going to call it here today. Um, it seems to work out pretty well to do um, a shift, like do one shift per episode. So let's recap. We picked up three packs, Una, uh, Fiona, and Liam. Um, I loved all three of them. None of them puked in my car, which is, you know, wonderful. Um, and yeah, I think the night went from very odd, um, to a little heartrending, to reminding us of the strong cyberpunk, uh, dystopian vibes of Los Ojos, um, especially since, uh, well, I guess sometime soon I'm gonna have to actually decide whether I want Liam to share that photo or not because as Lena says it could sway public opinion in terms of Sophie's law Sophie's law is inherently stacked against us an actual car driver um, and I am definitely sickened Sickened, I tell you, um, by how Capra turned, you know, uh, what was supposed to be just, you know, a vigil of people coming out to mourn a public figure. Um, you know, a ballerina who was caught in a tragic accident. Um, into, well, yes, a brand partnership and, you know, a, uh, a horrible capitalist moment via these fuel grids that um, yeah I would also have the same issues with as Liam Baird so I'm not sure I'll, uh, I'll mull it over I guess and then we'll head right back into it in our third episode Well, folks, that was it today for our second episode of Grumble Plays Neocab. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a like if you did. And if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, go do that now. Hit the bell icon to be notified whenever a new video goes up. I post new gaming content almost every week. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Anamarabella. And if you'd like to support me and this channel, you can check out my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Anamarabella or my Kofi at kofi.com forward slash grumble. 
patrons and members unlock new episodes early, and then there's always new meta essays and reviews that I post over the course of the month. Also this month, as we've just entered October, I'll be participating in an alternative Inktober challenge called Peachtoba. Check that out on Twitter, check out the hashtag Peachtober21. And same as last year, every day, according to the prompt, I'll be writing a snippet of a new original story. I'll post those on uh, on Twitter, on my Kofi, on Instagram. And at the end of it, I'll make an ebook out of it that I'll be put up on my shop. So check out the membership tiers to see if uh, any of that tickles your fancy. All tiers also gain access to my Discord server. You can also find the link in the description below to get temporary access and check it out. That's all from me this week. I hope you're all keeping very well and have a lovely day. Bye.